When your legs don't work like they used to before And I can't sweep you off of your feet What'd you do that for? I don't know how I'm gonna monetize this video. So there goes my four dollars fifty because of Ed Sheeran. I'm an elite runner now. I got the shoes, I got the watch, but most importantly, I got the tunes. The scientists have said that music improves running. It does. The problem is when is playing the wrong song. Then there's issues. Now, as an elite athlete, you don't want to run fast all the time, especially when you're training for a marathon. You want to do some slow runs. They call them zone two runs. I talked about this in my previous video. You can watch that one. So if I'm on a slow run and I'm hearing the most motivational track of all time, Naruto opening six, it's going to subconsciously make me run faster. I don't want to run fast. That was supposed to be tomorrow. And now I've ruined my entire schedule. So I'm making a running app, which will read my running data, you know, speed, cadence, heart rate, collect it so then I can choose songs based on how I'm running. So if I'm running fast, I should get When I'm slow, I'm getting Yeah. And I will call this app Locomotive. It's basically the greatest name of all time. English teachers will be analyzing this for years to come. Think about it, locomotives train, train like training, like running, but also locomotives have to stay on the track, but the track could also mean a music track, but also the track could also mean a running track. So you've got to make sure you're staying on the right track, the locomotive, train. Do you get it? It's understand, it's, do you know how many entendres there are here? It's, it's insane. And people might say, well, Jaden, just build a running playlist. No, I don't want to, okay? I like to run with variety, all right? I pick one song, I go on Spotify, choose the radio, I like to listen to songs related to that. Some of them, you know, pretty good. Most of the time, though, it's garbage. Especially when I'm trying to run fast and then the arms of an angel starts playing. Spotify's also got their own running tracks where they, you can specify the 180 beats per minute, which I try to use. Spotify is a liar. Not even one of them was 180 beats per minute. It's fraudulent. And that's why I'm doing what Spotify couldn't do because... I've got too much time in my head. <laughs> now, so it doesn't take me three years to do something because, unfortunately, I lack discipline and ability as well. I, I lack I lack a lot of things. So, I'm going to have to ask for some help. Hello? Locomotive? More like loco... living la vida loco. You want me to help you with your program? Oh, that's awesome, bro. Really. What am I gonna do? What? <laughs> Eventually, he started asking the real questions. You just shit your pants. What? And then finally, the main question about this app. How are we gonna program this thing? Some say that this task is impossible. I'm ashamed to say it, but I think they might be right. Our future lies in their city at hand. No. It's done. <laughs> They've done it. They've done it. <laughs> If you're lying to me, Washington DC will never be the same. Now show me. Finally, 
monkey see. Monkey see? More like monkey doo doo. It is the worst language ever made. I'm really good at it now though. But yes, we are going to use monkey see, which is the language for Garmin watches. So if you've got an Apple watch, unlucky. So I got Pietro doing the authentication process for Spotify. Authentication is basically like, say, you're trying to go to someone's house, you don't have a key. Here's why authentication is like borrowing a house key. Imagine you've arrived at a friend's house. You don't have a key, so you knock. Your friend opens the door and hands you a temporary key. This key lets you enter, but it won't last forever. It'll disappear soon. So what do you do? You keep knocking to refresh your key. This is exactly how online authentication works. And after getting through the outdated Monkey C documentation and their own sheer stupidity, we were finally able to get the Spotify API connected. And after some pondering, I came up with an idea on how to connect the song data to the running data. Okay, so basically if we don't get these quarterlies on track, we're going to be in for a world of hurt. I mean, I can't even imagine what we're trying to cook up. Oh, gosh. Okay, okay Jaden. Jaden. Okay, you're on speaker. What's the story? Yeah, I've figured it out. So. What we're going to do, we're going to just segregate the data. Segregate the song data, the running data, and that way we'll be able to match the correct song to the correct run. Okay, so racism, I guess. All right. But Let me clarify. We're going to put the data in six categories. Warm-up, recovery, tempo, race mode, revival, and cooldown. See, naming the categories is the easy part. But how am I actually going to categorize the running data in the songs properly? Well, there's only two variables you need to determine the pace of a runner. Stride length and cadence. So if you increase your cadence, which is your steps per minute, you're obviously going to be running faster. And combine that by measuring the heart rate and checking which zone the runner is at, we can estimate which category the runner is running in. So with running data sorted, it was time to figure out a solution in categorizing songs. I went through all the songs, one by one in my running playlist. Now the original idea for the app was to base it directly on your heart rate. The more I digged into it, the temper of a song really doesn't have much to do with if it's good for running or not. The good thing is, is that Spotify has its own audio attributes. Danceability, energy, speech, instrumental, acoustic. So after using some brilliant AI, I was able to create parameters for each category. Now this data is going to be a bit biased towards me. So then I built a website. People of the world can have their opinion by pressing agree or disagree. And yeah, we got a bunch of data. We got also a bunch of people trying to delete my entire table, but yeah, other than that, pretty good. So the key to make this running data work, and not just for me, was I couldn't just hard code the running specifications to see what is a fast run, what is a slow run. I needed to measure the changes. I exported all my running data, put in Excel, started calculating the variance. So idea one went straight into the bin. There was no correlation with my data. But then I thought about correlation. I may be able to use my knowledge of mathematics standard two to my advantage. Please explain linear regression to people. So as you can see from this linear regression analysis performed, Mexican, I mean, Latinx people, they like, say, these tacos. And who doesn't, right? But the, the correlation is... I, I, are we allowed to say that? Is that... Right, whatever. Just roll the apology clip. Just roll the apology. Just in case. I'm sorry. I'm going to block my guys for my day because So what does this all mean? Well, instead of Mexicans, replace that with the running data, and instead of tacos, replace that with time. Now, I can determine if I'm running faster, slower, or being relatively stable through the power of Pearson's correlation coefficient. So we put the formula in there, and finally, the brains of locomotive is complete. So now it's time to make it actually work. It turns out, a smartwatch isn't as powerful as my epic PC. So, like Better Call Saul trying to find sketchy workarounds to his problems, we have to do the same while adhering to the restrictions of the watch. Some of these include... Anyway, here's the UI. You got it all here. You got the running info, the category, the song. That one pauses and plays a song, but it also pauses and plays the running activity. This one makes you go back. This one's like a playlist. And, ah, uh, this one. <laughs> Skip. Yes. As you can see, there's 
some issues. We've got double ups in buttons. So we're gonna have two watch faces, one for the running, one for the music. You've got the start and stop section on the run, and then you click any of these two buttons to open up the music menu. And then you got the music data, you got the pause play, select playlist, and the skip button. <sighs> okay, let's talk about the skip button. The first thing you need to know is that there's no way of clearing Spotify queue on the API. There's no command for it. If I queue anything on Spotify in the app, it's going to stay there until it plays. So to make sure I get the most accurate song in queue, I need to make sure I'm queuing the song just before it changes. Uh, but if someone skips, how do I make sure that there's a song there to skip in the first place? Let's just try and run the code directly one after the other. Obviously, that's not going to work because it's an API core and I can't guarantee if one thing will happen before the other. What could we do instead? Well, I could create a delay, uh, but I can't do that either because then I'll trigger the watchdog. Which is like that monkey from Toy Story 3 that checks to see if it's a certain time has passed. And if it has, then it goes, wah, 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 and the watch crashes. So then I had a brilliant idea. What if it was two button presses? The first one would cue the song, and only when the song is in queue will then the second button skip. And that was pretty good. It worked. And now it's good enough for testing. I opened up the early access and had people from all over the globe. North Macedonia. And then the guy from Switzerland starts to message me that it's not working. But then we got it working. And after fine tuning my own issues that I found. We're in race mode right now because we're racing. It looks like we're finally done with locomotion. Um, Jaden, we got a problem. While queuing was working perfectly in the simulator, when it was attempted on the watch, the queue, for some reason, had something in it, but the something in it was nothing, so it thought there's something, but there's nothing in it, it queued nothing, but it can't queue nothing. To add to the problems, half of the early access members had watches which weren't going to work with the app, as they didn't have enough memory. So I asked Pietro if he could go and try and optimize the memory within the app. During this optimization, he found something interesting. The song categorization function wasn't being called. And so it was time to review Pietro's pull request. And all looks alright, I mean... Wait, you can invoke callbacks in Monkey C? Oh, all I need to do is a bit of minor adjustments. Now categorization is working. But not only that, if I can invoke the skip function in the add to queue API call, I can make the skip button only one press. And so, after hours of debugging, I finally got it. Version 0.97 of Locomotive, which is now live on Connect IQ. See this? This is FY24. What's the difference between that and FY23? No growth! No growth! Not even a little bit. We're staying flat. <laughs> Karen was right. Let me just go to the Frank, Frank Sting geyser. <laughs> Frank, Frank, Frank Sting geyser, yeah. We need Frank Sting geyser. He's the only man that could bring us out of this hole room. He's the 